ALP is a voluntary regional network. It was formed in September 2012. It supports low emission development strategies and support countries in advancing NDCs. So Let's GB operates through three regional platforms. Asia, Asia Lids Partnership is one of them. Uh, currently, the Let's GB is hosted by National Renewable Energy Laboratory under the US Department of States. It's a membership based organization. It has uh, more than 1,200 members, 421 organizations, uh, um, also has 850 individual members. It also contain, um, has a membership from 65 government agencies across 14 Asian countries. We support countries in advancing climate change goals, NDCs, et cetera. Our main objective is to coordinate, um, collaborate, and develop partnership for low emission development in the Asia region. We foster learning and uh, share tools and best practices. We also facilitate capacity building and awareness through strengthening leadership. Um, so that's why um, we are facilitating this session as well. So where Chinese Taipei officials are sharing their best case examples to other countries in the Asia region. Yeah, next slide, please. Uh, so we at Asia Lids Partnership run several thematic communities of practice. So these communities of practice uh, helps in group learning. Uh, people uh, working in a particular sector, experts, practitioners, country representatives come together and learn on a specific topic. Uh, so this session uh, is proposed under the energy communities of practice. There are other topics which we plan to focus uh, in the rest of the year such as uh, battery energy storage system, deployment of large-scale RE through adoption of innovative financial mechanisms, net zero energy pathways, transformation, etc. Many activities under this communities of practices uh, yet to come. And uh, as part of this specific webinar series, uh, we uh, today's session will focus on smart grids and uh, another session on 14th, day after tomorrow, will focus on weather information system and how does it help for green technologies. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so these are the other communities of practice, uh, such as uh, clean mobility, NDC finance, green and socially inclusive economic recovery. There are a different focus topics under each of these themes. And um, if you want, I'm not going to explain in detail of all these activities. So uh, for further information, you could write to Asia Lids Partnership. And then uh, we could uh, share further information. And uh, more, these information are also available in our website. And uh, yeah. Um, and here are the next slide, please. Uh, OK. so. We have a housekeeping rules for today. Most of the most part of the session, the participants will be in mute mode, and um, the participants can use the chat box for sending comments, uh, which will be answered during Q and A session. Also, uh, during uh, Q and A session, the participants can directly ask questions. So we request you to. Uh, click raise the hand option so that we will unmute you. You can ask uh, questions directly to the speakers. So this is the arrangement for housekeeping rules. Um, so I'll just introduce our eminent speakers for today and hand over the uh, dice to them. Uh, the first speaker is Mr. Quan Hua Su, who has more than 18 years of experience in smart grid. For the past uh, four years, he is working as advanced metering infrastructure engineer and has been implementing uh, meter data management systems in Taiwan Power Company. Uh, and one other important work that he has done is uh, uh, by the end of 2022, uh, feeder visualization integration platform, which was led by Mr. Su, will be running online to support uh, big data analysis in power distribution. 
and uh, the second speaker is Ms. Chi Yu Chang, who is the project leader of AMI Feasibility Research from the Industrial Technology and Research Institute. So we welcome both the eminent speakers for today's session. A warm welcome to both of you. And uh, we first uh, welcome uh, Ms. Chang uh, to start the presentation. Um, yeah, you may share your screen uh, to start your presentation, Ms. Chang. Okay, I because I, I will start from the introduce the policy, so I don't have slides here. Um, okay, I'm Che Yu Zhang, a researcher of ETRI and work with the Bureau of Energy Taiwan. And it's my pleasure to briefly introduce the smart grid policy in Taiwan. Uh, we, we launched smart grid master plan in 2011, and we had a rather comprehensive uh, dimensions and, and around 67 working items. And then after a decade in 2020, uh, we just happened to encounter a uh, power outage. So we amended the master plan and considering the problem solving and system integration, these two principles. So we narrowed down the, to focus on three targets in the policy. So uh, the first to improving the power quality uh, to to reach the, and to reach and stabilize the current 20% uh, renewable target and to encourage the uh, energy conservation. We we keep adopting and investing technology such as ICT, AI, and feed line automation, and or oh, and storage batteries to upgrade our power grids. And for move uh, for improving the renewable uh, the renewable stability, we invested in AI and big data for the power output, uh, for the power output forecast, and also deployed the storage batteries uh, to buffer it. So and for speed up the recovery from the outage, our plan is to scale up the feed line auto automation and enhance the GIS system and re real time monitor and real time monitoring, which AMI or the, the smart meters could play a role for it. Then um and the last to encourage and enabling the energy saving. We keep the efforts on the small metering install installation. So our current goal is three million households in 2024. It's which is uh, 21 percent of the households, and uh, an old corresponding time of use tariff and demand response tariff programs. So we hope that uh, we can reach the size of demand response to 2.8 gigawatt. It's around 7% of our peak load in 2025 for improving the dispatch uh, flexibility and peak load shaping. And I think this is a brief background introduction. And then I think we can, uh, Mark can stop uh, for introduce the Taiwan AMI deployment and applications, the presentation. Okay. okay, thank you everyone. And uh, I will share my slides for you. Maybe you can stop sharing. Okay. Uh, do you see my slides? No. You can just start sharing, yeah. Okay. It's coming up. Okay. As yes, we are able to see the mark, maybe you can put it in full screen mode. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Masu. Uh, I'm pleased to uh, have the opportunity to share the, my experience 
for deploy smart meter in Taiwan. And uh, today, uh, the agenda uh, have uh, there are five topics we want to share for you. The first topic is the smart meter rollout plan. The second topic is the Taiwan MI architecture. The third topic is the, is the grid side application. And uh, the four topic and the five topic uh, is the enhanced customer service and the demand side management. And uh, the next two topic uh, will introduce by Zhe Yu Zhang. Okay. Okay. Uh, The first topic, uh, I will introduce the smart meter low, low out plan in Taiwan. Okay, uh, about uh, 10 years ago, the Taiwan uh, begins to uh, deploy smart meter in industry customer. As we know, the customer, we can, there are three type customer in Taiwan. The first customer is the industrial customer. And the, the, the second customer is the residential and the commercial customer. And the, uh, uh, you can see about the, in 2013, uh, Taiwan Power complete the installation for all industry customers. And uh, we can see the uh, the all industrial customers about uh, uh, 28,000 meters in all uh, industry customers. And uh, the Thai power can monitor about 16% power consumption, uh, power consumption. Okay, this is the first milestone uh, for Taiwan power to install all industry customers in 2013. And uh, the next milestone is the, about uh, in 2016, Taiwan government uh, released the Smart Grid Master Plan. And uh, according to this master plan, Taiwan Power need to uh, Government set up the four uh, target for Taiwan Power. The first uh, target is the, the uh, Taiwan Power need to deploy the uh, 20,000 meters before 219 and uh, deploy 1 million meters before 2022. Okay, and the next milestone is to deploy three million meters. And the next milestone is to deploy uh, 16 million uh, smart meters before 2030. And uh, uh, in Taiwan, uh, there are about uh, uh, 40 million meters in Taiwan is total meters about uh, 40 million. So is so is the first thirty uh, the Taiwan power uh, need to uh, deploy uh, large number of meters. So it is the big challenge for Taiwan power. So. Uh, in order to achieve the government goal, the Taiwan Power uh, have the uh, low out plan. The smart meter low, low out plan is that we can see the, uh, we need to decide the high priority because there are many uh, customers in Taiwan. We need to decide which which one, which area is, uh, has the high priority to deploy. So Taiwan Power uh, uh, separated about the one, 
1600 small area. Uh, and the calculator each uh, power com average power consumption uh, of each area. And the to decide uh, which area you need to deploy with the high priority. So the, the most the most high priority we can see the 900, 900 kilowatt hour area customers. In this area customers, Taiwan Power, power will first study to deploy smart meter in this area. The second area is the uh, uh, 700 kilowatt hour area and the next is the 500 kilowatt hour and the next is the uh, 400 kilowatt hour. And the, the strategy of this low hour plan is uh, we use the uh, 20, uh, we use the 18, 20 rule to do this, uh, to, 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 to design this low hour plan. Uh, because uh, as we know, the benefit or deploy smart meter, the most benefit of deploy smart meter is to we hope we hope uh, the uh, users, the customers in Taiwan can see the, their AMI data uh, by using his cell phone apps to uh, help customers to uh, to save uh, energy, uh, to save energy usage, to improve customers' energy efficiency. So, so we, so we deploy the smart meter according to the, the power consumption. Uh, uh, we deploy the smart meter according to the power consumption. Okay, and the now uh, in the present uh, 2022, uh, Taiwan Power uh, has deployed about 1.5. Uh, 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 today, about 1.6 million meters in in this moment, and uh, in the future. Uh, Taiwan Power will accelerate, will uh, be accelerate the low hour plan and uh, uh, to achieve the uh, next target three million meters. Okay. Okay. The, this side is the Taiwan Power design the website for Taiwan for Taiwan people uh, can use this website to see the uh, MI information. Uh, in this website, Taiwan Power uh, will introduce the, what is MI to, to, to Taiwanese. And uh, the important information is the law out uh, this way, uh, in this website, we can see the all out uh, map. Uh, for example, you can see the Taiwan Island in this picture. Uh, if you want to check up the uh, what, city, what city, uh, what, uh, what number of smart meter is installed in which in the in any city, you can uh, use mouse to uh, pick up the city. For example, you can pick up the Simpe city, and uh, the website will show you the in Simpe city. Uh, it has deployed uh, about uh, 20 a uh, smart meters. Okay. And uh, in the next side, uh, you uh, Taiwan people also can 
key in the near electricity number in this website to uh, to and to query to understand uh, when to their house can uh, will replace to the smart meter. Okay, so this website is the information uh, uh, Taiwan Power uh, mess the website to uh, let Taiwan people to know the MI penalties and to do to let uh, Taiwan people to know uh, the MI law are progress. Okay. The second topic, uh, I will introduce the Taiwan MI uh, architecture. Okay, this this architecture uh, is very, uh, I think, is very special all over the world. Uh, in this architecture, we can see one left to side and uh, to right. One the left side, we can see the smart meter. Smart meet, in the smart meter bus, we can see the uh, smart, uh, there are two communication module. We call the route A and the route B in this smart meter. Uh, the route A can send the AMI data uh, to the Taiwan Power uh, meter data management system. And uh, from Route, route B, uh, smart meter can send the data uh, to the home energy, energy management system uh, from route B. So, so uh, the smart meter have the two uh, communication uh, route can send the data to the different system and the uh, the, uh, this architecture has the four important uh, uh, highlights part. The first uh, highlight is the uh, we decide the predictable communication module. As we know, the communication technology uh, uh, from the traditional 4G, 5G, and uh, MBIOT. The technology is changed very fast. So we design this plugable module. Uh, we can easily change the communication technology without the turn of the uh, meter, uh, meter uh, power. The meter power can uh, still running at night, and uh, we can, uh, at the same time, we can change the route uh, communication module. So this is the good design. Uh, this is the very good design to uh, for communication, for smart meter communication. Okay. And uh, the second uh, highlight uh, spark is that we follow the IEC standard. Uh, we can see from this picture, uh, we can see the P1, P2, uh, P4, P5, P6. Uh, this, is, this means the IEC standard because it's the different, uh, different systems need, needs to communal, communicate uh, uh, by the uh, uh, internet, by the communication center. So the different mental systems can communicate each other. In the present, the, in Taiwan, uh, there are about six uh, meter mentors in Taiwan, and uh, there are about uh, five uh, communication vendors in in Taiwan market. 
So this different mental systems can, uh, their systems can connect together uh, by this uh, status. And uh, the next uh, highlight is the I want power in, in order to implement this architecture. I want power to release three uh, tender three uh, release and uh, uh, separate uh, the three part to procure to purchase the uh, products. So uh, the first part is we purchase the smart meter. The second part Taiwan power need to release. Uh, the two uh, tender to purchase the communication system. And uh, the third part, uh, we also release uh, another uh, tender to purchase the meter data management systems. And uh, it, so, so it is the it, uh, as we know, many country uh, many uh, utilities all over the world always uh, use the term key. Uh, 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 also deploy the smart meter uh, by term key project. But uh, uh, Taiwan Power, we don't uh, use the term key project. We, we don't like the term key project to deploy the Smart meter. Because if we use the turnkey project to deploy the smart meter, uh, the, uh, the we will uh, we will be locked in by vendors because the one vendor's product will uh, we will uh, depend on one vendor's product. I'm, it is not good for the maintainers in the future. So, uh, so in this uh, architecture, uh, it, it's the I, I I need to say is uh, is the hard work for Taiwan Power because the turnkey project is the easy way to improve. And uh, we do not use the term key. This uh, in the beginning is the uh, very it's a very hard work to integrate uh, the different system. And uh, I am uh, in the present. I am uh, uh, glad to say uh, this. Uh, we are successfully. Uh, integrate uh, the different system and the very successful. And uh, this, this system is very uh, successful running about three years. Okay. okay. The, this slide we will show you uh, the smart meter have the two, I need to say is we, the smart meter have the low A and the low B pass to transfer the data. At the front of this side, we can see the uh, front the low, low, low A, the KMI data will trans, uh, the smart meter will uh, send the KMI data to the Taiwan Power, uh, to, to the uh, uh, meter Taiwan Power uh, meter data management. Okay, and uh, from the right side, the smart meter can send the data to the home energy, home energy management system. Okay, so uh, let me go to the grid side application. The, when we have the MI data, Taiwan Power uh, uh, start to use the, to do the big data analysis 
for AMI data. The first application is that we use the AMI data to monitor the, to predict the distribution transformer uh, 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 power usage. And uh, we can use the AMI data to predict the, uh, 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 which transformer is, if is overloading or transformer uh, we, or, and uh, we can also use the AMI voltage data to to uh, find if the transformer uh, is uh, 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 if we not uh, not health. And uh, we also use the AMI data combined with the FZ data to calculate the transformer uh, 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 risk factor. And this risk factor is the, we want to use the condition-based maintenance to, uh, to, uh, to change our maintenance loop. Okay, the next, uh, uh, we want to show you uh, Taiwan Power use AMI data is we use the AMI data and the SCADA data to uh, uh, calculate the feeder status. Uh, in If we can use the AMI data to calculate the status, we can see we can use the color, the red, the nine or green nine to understand the uh, feeder, uh, uh, if, if any feeder is uh, is under the high, if, if the any feeder is over voltage or over current. Okay, uh, and this, this application is still running in Taiwan Power Company, and uh, I I am the lead, uh, leader to to control this uh, big data uh, project. Okay, the next uh, slice, uh, my, my slice ha has finished, and the next uh, uh, the Zhe Yu Zhang will introduce uh, uh, the next two topic. Okay, thank you. Okay, I wish the slides runs well right now. Um, okay, everything okay, right? <laughs> okay, so I would um, start from uh, I, I'm helping um, the the Thai power for this uh, for these slides. Um, I'll spend a bit time to elaborate the functions. Um, of smart meters, then that will be easier to follow the, the later slides. Okay, and um, the smart meters, or we, or we say the AMI, is always called the pioneer of smart grids because uh, it's due to two uh, attributes. Because the first one is the interval data, that is a higher resolution uh, power consumption data. And in Taiwan, it is 15 minutes interval and to two hours for some countries. The second one is the two-way communication. Um, not only the energy consumption data sending to the utility timely, but also the utility can remote control to the smart meters. So when you have a higher resolution meters data, it allows the users applicable for time uh, for time based tariff because the usage of time of the peak hours of of or the off peak has to be measured for billing um i think uh, for the last one um give an example if a if a user was cut off by not paying the bill the the power company can just remotely um uh, not paying the bill, so so it will be cut off, right? And then the power company can just remotely and immediately reconnect the user's uh, electricity supply 
when they pay the fee. So the users no, no longer need to wait for the arrangement for the technicians to visit your site, your house, and to connect to you. Okay. The last one, uh, the late, this one is about um, the Thai power companies. Uh, they, they provide uh, AP, apps. Uh, in some countries, such as UK, um, the utility provide a in-home display. Uh, like it's like a small monitor to the users for seeing the consumption or, or production data of your house. And in Taiwan, Thai Power launch apps instead. Um, so then the users can uh, check the bill of the last turn and uh, the current consumption status and estimate the current bill. Also, it provides you the comparison of your historical consumption, for, for example, compare with the same time of last year or just compare with the last month. And I, we, we believe that the visualization is going to help to raise the awareness of um, energy conser uh, conservation and to help uh, the users manage their expense. Okay, okay, and the last then comes to the high voltage users. I think um, for the high voltage uh, users like industrial customers, uh, as Mark mentioned, normally they, they are the first one, they are the first to be installed smart meters due to their consumption is major and concentrated. So I think uh, they are only two thousands of the whole users, but account for nearly seventy percent of electricity consumption in Taiwan. So um, the in Taiwan, they these users were already um, full deployed by smart meters, and here this one is the web portal for them. So first, uh, first uh, users can get a very basic consumption information by hourly, by hourly uh, base. And you can see these fancy charts. Um, these are the user's consumption pattern analysis. So you can tell merely by the charts, this user uh, could be a commercial users because you can see the working hour curve, right? Race, and also the lunch break. And to the, the the dark green pattern, it's ob obviously the, the off day for the whole office or factory. So um, also the, the high voltage users, they have to assign a contracted capacity to the power company. So uh, it's like a maximum uh, what you can consume. So if their consumption is, uh, is approaching near to the cap, the system will send a alert to their mobile or, or by email. Then the users can take some actions to prevent the fines of uh, over contracting consumption. Okay. And the next. Okay, the next, uh, we are talking about the demand side management. Um, um, why it is important that I think it's due to the physical limit to the electricity grid uh, because the, the sub -supp supply has to feed the demand all the time and the tolerance of the variation and the gap is not too much. So smoothing the demand or match the, the demand and supply is very important for the energy efficiency and uh, the grid stability. So since now, we have more delicate consumption data, the, the small meters data, that power companies can uh, design uh, various tariff program. So now um, TP, the Thai Power, they has a wider tariff menu, such as the price-based program, and uh, which means the price differ from the time of you use the power. It's the concept or to give users incentive to switch to switch or to reduce the consumption. And I think the latest and special program is the school the school automation automated demand response. 
uh, because the government, they equipped all mandated education with air conditions and EMS. And so the power company now provide a, a demand response program for them. So for the schools, they can save more money if they are uh, response to the call from the power company by raise by raise the temperature settings of the air condition or which doesn't really affect the comfort of students so much and for the for the power company they can uh, reduce the afternoon peak okay the next okay uh now we are talking about the um the home area energy management system um the the major drivers are the you know the high renewable penetration and the electric vehicle charging in the near future and the, these two uh, fluctuate both demand and supply a lot so we need the the energy management system to manage and to buffer it so for the renewable and ev charging point they were all equipped with these smart meters as well. So the power, power grid operator can monitor the consumption or the renewable power output merged, the merged uh, status to, to the grid. Then they can optimize the dispatch to balance, to balance the grid. Also for the utility, if um, the home area can work as a, a microgrid concept, which is to manage and to consume their, their own power production, which will reduce the fluctuations um, into the main grid. So this is also fits the decentralized energy system concept. Okay, and okay, and and let's reach the last one. So, due to the previous benefit, <clears throat> sorry, uh, this year um, Taiwan Power Company they start a new joint venture business about HEMS, the the home area EMS. Um, they cooperate with a HEMS solution company, and I, I think this is quite natural for for Thai Power because the HEMS make user side the demand side manageable, and which beneficial for the balancing the grid and also Thai power they are the major and the only one for now um, that has the all users all electricity users account so i think i think it's a start for for Taiwan power company to move to a liberalized energy market and you know to provide the various uh, service than before and I think in the end, um, these smart grid technologies can um, improve uh, the energy efficiency and the whole power grid system. Uh, so that I think that's the, the end. Thanks. So now we're back to the host. Um, yeah. Thank you, uh, Mark and um, for the excellent uh, presentation and. Uh, sharing the experiences from Chinese Taipei. Uh, it was really helpful. Uh, we will now open the floor for discussion. And um, uh, uh, and if the participants uh, have any questions, you can raise the mm -hmm. hand. We will unmute you. You can, we can, you can directly ask the questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, also you can feel free to post your message in chat option um so while the participants come up with questions we already have a few questions uh, to ask so maybe we will uh, uh, inform the questions so you uh, mr uh, mark and chang you can please feel free to answer so the first one is um, what is the uh, ami equipment uh, installation fees and uh, uh, is it covered by government or uh, the people has to pay for it? And if that's the case, uh, what is the um, acceptance or affordability uh, for people? Could you share some insight on that? OK, 
Okay, thank you. Uh, about the first uh, question, uh, uh, I have some uh, data to share for you. Uh, in Taiwan smart meter, uh, uh, the single phase uh, single phase meter is cost about two thousand twenty dollars, and uh, three single phase meter uh, cost us about four thousand twenty uh, dollars, and uh, communication uh, communication uh, the communication cost us about the one meter. Communication uh, cost about two thousand twenty dollars, and uh, uh, for meter data management system, about the one meter uh, uh, system uh, cost uh, one thousand twenty dollars, and uh, this the statistics from the one point five million. Uh, meters in in the past uh, three years, and uh, in these years, I I have to say I often accept the uh, complaint telephone from Taiwan people. They someone uh, will complain uh, they want to replace the smart meter faster, and uh, someone will complain to to say they do not, they don't like smart meter. They don't want to replace two smart meter. So someone wants to replace first firstly, eh, firstly, and uh, someone want to, uh, do not want to change to smart meter. So, uh, but uh, uh, most uh, people in Taiwan, they are, uh, to see the smart meter because Taiwan Power provide the uh, uh, Thai Power apps. Uh, Taiwan people can use their cell phone to see their MI data, uh, to see the six hours ago uh, power consumption data. Okay, so they can use the to the this data to uh to save energy so i think maybe 19 percent people uh, will like to uh, change to the smart meter okay all right thank you mark that's uh, interesting um all right um so um my next question is um if uh, the south asian countries would like to go for this AMA infrastructure. Uh, do you have any suggestions for a economical low um, cost uh, installation of AMA infrastructure? And do you have any suggestions for the governments who wants to uh, take this up? Okay. About uh, the second question is uh, 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 in Taiwan for. Uh, Taiwan Power in in Taiwan, Taiwan Power uh, have uh, do uh, have already do the uh, benefit cost cost uh, ratio uh, about the price monitor, and uh, as we know, the AMI benefits we are. Uh, uh, the one benefit is the green side benefit. We can use the MI data to support uh, the electric grid operating. The second benefit is that we can uh, provide the customer side to set uh, energy. And uh, the, the, the third benefit is the society side uh, we can uh, to reduce the low uh, carbon if we use the the AMI data to save energy. So uh, about this, the uh, Zhe Yuzhang now is working to help t 
help Taiwan power to do the cost, uh, penalty cost, cost ratio. So if Southern Asia uh, have the uh, low government budget, uh, I think uh, you, you can follow Taiwan power in Taiwan power. You can deploy the industry of first uh, in the previous slides. Uh, Taiwan Power deployed the smart meter 10 years ago in the industrial customers. So if you have the low budget, I suggest you can, uh, uh, first priority is to deploy uh, to the industrial custom. And the second priority is to deploy to the renewable energy customers. Okay. okay sure. This is our suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mark. And um, yeah, um, maybe uh, there is an, another question. So um, since uh, Mark, you are in this field for several years, um, also do you, how do you compare um, this uh, Chinese Taipei policies with um, other countries or say Japan or even with mainland China. So how does it uh, different or is there anything in specific um, that you want to highlight? Okay. Uh, uh, as we know, the Japan, uh, the Japan uh, type call of Southern Korea, uh, uh, Cape and the uh, uh, mainland China, they already deploy uh, about over the uh, maybe three thousand meters. So they are uh, so so in Taiwan we are uh, so compared to this advanced country, we are uh, smart meter uh, uh, are dead for, for, uh, compared to them. We are uh, dead. But uh, I think the advantage uh, in Taiwan, I, I think the, the variable uh, advantage is our architecture. As the last side, I share you with this AMI architecture uh, is very special, and uh, uh, the electric power research institute uh, in USA is also uh, a very like this architecture. So I think we need this architecture, and uh, we uh, we do not use the term key solution. I, I think okay. these two, two uh, uh, because if we do not use the turnkey solution, we can avoid the, the vendor seducting and we can set a large, uh, to set the money or maintainers. Okay. So I think these okay. two, this is our advantage. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Mark. And, and uh, maybe we'll ask one question to Ms. Chang. Uh, from uh, your perspective, uh, what are the factors that you would suggest uh, uh, for consideration of um, smart meter installation plan for other countries, say South Asian countries? So from your perspective, what are the points these countries should consider? Okay, I, I think it's a very big question. And it really depends on i think there are two um two two um questions you have to ask for this uh, utilities or government L the first is what kind of energy market you want and the second is the the local conditions um let me um, take an example if um, you are talking about a consumer he, uh, it just want a uh, just want to use the time of uh, use tariff then maybe a simple uh, digital meter 
can do that because you just need uh, the hourly consumption data, right, for all the billing. But if you're talking about that the, the consumer, you are, it become a prosumer, when, which means like um, it produce maybe the renewable output, uh, the, the, the power output and sell and wanted to sell to the market. So you, you need to record and also a real time uh, response to the market. But at the same time, the consumer also want to buy from the grid. So, so at this occasion that the meters has to allow in and out a recording data, right? And also that um, the communication um, affect a lot because small AMI actually, uh, it's really rely on the, is, is that successful for its communication transmission? And so at this point, the environment of the small meters which installed is, is quite important. For example, in Taiwan, we always mix the, the, the commercial and residential um, users together. So the, the environment can be very complex. Some in the, some meters installed in the basement, some are in a concrete apartment and all are together. All the meters are, uh, are setting together. So it's really um, different uh, or um, situation to replace the small meters. Also, um, for example, like the cost, the market mark mentioned that uh, Taiwan is a little bit late than like Japan or or even like the Nordic countries. They they replaced the small meter in like two decades ago. But the main reason is their uh, their human power. The cost is really high, right? Uh, compared with Taiwan or maybe in the South Asia. So. As long as they they can re, um, they can uh, avoid the manual site visiting cost, the the whole system the, the cost is recovered very fast. But in Taiwan, it, the, the the benefit is is lower than the Nordic countries, so we are a bit late. Um, I think um, these are these are really different condition local conditions to to choose. And also, I think the first thing is the most important. Um, what, what, uh, what is what kind of energy market, or you are thinking about, and then you can match the functions to the spec of smart meters. Yeah, I think. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Chang, for the detailed answer, um, and. Um... As we are already uh, over time by a minute, um, I think uh, uh, we'll uh, close the session with some final remarks. Uh, and then if um, participants have any further questions, they can reach out to ALP Secretariat and then we'll direct uh, send those questions to the speakers and we'll get the answers. Um, so once again, we want to thank uh, everyone for participating in the webinar. Our special thanks to the eminent speakers, uh, Mr. Mark and uh, Ms. Chang, uh, for your excellent uh, presentations. Uh, the recording of the webinar and the slide deck will be shared uh, subsequently in email. And uh, if any of you wants to learn further on any other topics, thematic communities of practice that ALP is managing, you can write to us. Also, as I said, if you have any further questions to the speakers, you can uh, send your questions to us. Uh, we also look forward to seeing all of you in the next session, which is planned on 14th of July, same time. It will focus on weather information application service in green energy operation. And uh, before we wind up, we request all the participants and speakers to uh, please turn on your videos. We'll just take one group photo before we say bye if that's okay with all of you. Um, all right. Um, now, Sashi, can you take a pick?
um, Sashi, have you taken a group pick? All right. Um, sure. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, your contributions. We wish you a great day. Bye.